I was 2018. This is my entry, Paradigm. In this video, I'm going to go over the key components of Paradigm, how the testing went and development, and how it did at the actual event. So, Paradigm is based on a Cortex Robotics tiny chassis with a Pi 3 Model B for computing, an Adafruit touchscreen for display, and a Pi Camera V2 for uh, image capture. All of the challenges were entered autonomously uh, using computer vision only, no other sensors were used. Uh, it runs off a large capacity lithium polymer battery, so it gets a couple of hours runtime. Uses a Rock Candy uh, PlayStation style controller for user input because there's a uh, menu system, so I can select the different challenges using the screen. And it uses a PyCon Zero motor driver board and driving the motors. I went with the tiny chassis this year because in previous entries I'd been part of a larger team, Hitchin Hackspace, where I'd been responsible for the mechanical design and I'd had other teammates work on the electronics and software. Uh, this year I wanted to work on my software skills, so I thought using a kit as a starting point would uh, discourage me from uh, spending too much time on the mechanical design and help me to focus on the software. So the kit went together really well, it was, it was easy to build and of course as soon as I got it together uh, we went with driving practice, RC mode, uh, just driving it around. It didn't take very long to realise that the chassis is a bit unstable and it's liable to wheelies and endos uh, which became interesting in future testing. The first autonomous challenge I tackled was Over the Rainbow. Over the Rainbow is a challenge where you have to drive towards different colour balls in a colour sequence. You don't know which corner of the arena they're going to be in, but you know you need to drive towards them in red, blue, yellow, green order. Um, luckily there was some example code provided by the organisers which helped me get going. So this running hit now is uh, that code with my bit added on of just drive towards the correct colour and sequence. That went fairly well and I quite quickly got it to driving towards them, speeded it up and then later on developed a learning algorithm you can see here where it uh, turns around, checks what colours in each corner and then uh, drives towards them. Sometimes it got a little bit stuck. Um, I, I kind of dead reckoned 90 degree turns uh, of course with only the camera for input you can't do accurate 90 degree turns um, but it seemed to work pretty well. You can see here it's quite fast when it uh, turns correctly. See again, it's got stuck. Um, it's trying to turn 90 degrees from one ball to the next. And it's not there. It does in increasingly larger error corrections, um, but it keeps finding the previous ball and eventually it gets there. This kept cropping up in testing. Uh, so that's done the learning sequence, now it's going to run again uh, using the learned order, straight to red rather than turning right this time. A perfect 290 degrees there. I was using uh, the intermediate ball to correct for the second time, so it did a guessed 90 degrees the first time, and if the second ball was off to one side, it would increase or decrease the second turn. That worked quite well. Uh, without encoders and without an accelerometer, I found it didn't go particularly straight, especially in direction changes, so it would often get stuck uh, in, in this kind of pattern. But, we'll see, it gets there eventually. All of my testing was done using artificial lighting, either at home or at Makespace. Some of the testing at Makespace was done with the actual spotlights of the competition and it was pretty reliable. I got it to do it five times out of six, no problem, 10 second runs. Really pleased with that. But then took it to the event and of course the lighting and conditions were, were different. So here it is at the event and you can see the spotlights, it's done its learning sequence, not correctly, now it's doing a scan because it's, it's not picked up all the balls correctly. And then the damn wheel fell off. So I put that back on, ran it again, it gets towards red, and yet again, can't find blue. I realised after a while that my calibration routine used very slightly different codes to the actual challenge. This is a bit of a beginner error. Really, if I'd modularised my code correctly, they would both be using exactly the same code. As it was, some of the calibration factors, and I think uh, the exposure 
and white balance were some of the factors that were different. Um, so it calibrated okay, but when it came to the actual challenge, just the the reflections from the window or the, the lighting was just slightly different and it never picked up blue and the wheel fell off again. So that was quite disappointing. Uh, Over the Rainbow was my best challenge in practice. So on to the next one. This is Duck Shoot. So once I got coloured balls recognised, I realised I could recognise targets with very similar code. So I hooked up an elastic band gun uh, to the chassis and used a very similar code to aim at the targets and then fire the weapon. That worked really well, except a few days before the competition I found the elastic band gun was misfiring. Not something I'd made, it's just it emptied its whole magazine in one shot, in the first shot. Wow. So that first shot, it just then it fired four out of five of the elastic bands. It's taken a little while to line up now. So it's going to get that next target with its one remaining elastic band and now it's all out of elastic bands. So that was a bit annoying and so when we got to the actual competition we had to reload every single shot, so one, one elastic band at a time, which added loads of time. So here you can see the actual arena. The targets were duck shaped pieces of MDF with a hinge at the base. Um, they were about the size I was expecting uh, in terms of hittable area, so I'd been practicing with playing cards and these were quite similar, but I know a few competitors were a little bit irritated at how small the targets were. So given the challenge of having to reload every shot, we hit 10 targets, missed 2 and ran out of time. But of the 10 we hit, actually only 1 fell over. And the reason we missed two was because I started aiming higher to try and clip the top because I knew that we'd stand more chance of knocking them over if we hit the top. But that meant we missed a few. So I was a bit annoyed that we hit so many but got such a low score. The MDF targets were just too heavy for a feeble elastic bands to knock over. But the auto aiming worked really well. So another challenge that went well in practice but poorly at the event. Next up, straight line speed challenge. For this I used Aruco markers, which are QR code-like uh, patterns that can be easily recognised by computer vision. So here you can see a very early test of just drive towards the marker, and it worked fine at 7 metres. I actually haven't got many more videos of testing, so here's a few from Paradigm's point of view, uh, just driving towards the marker. And then at the event, yet again, lighting issues. Look at that, really bright light and really dark shadows. Just before the event I added a backup routine where if the marker couldn't be seen it would look for a line and follow the line and I have a feeling that might have been causing all these issues because the bright lights just off track might have appeared as a line so it might have been trying to follow those. I also think that because of the high contrast of the scene it couldn't actually pick up the marker because it was effectively in shadow so it was relying on the line the whole time. So another challenge that went well in practice but got scuppered by lighting conditions on the day. So in the preparation, once I got a RUCO detection working I could drive in a straight line. It meant I could move on to doing the minimal maze. So the minimal maze I just broke up to a series of straight line segments with a marker at each end and then I was just tuning the breaking point for each one and the turn direction to be able to complete the course. I started at home with a simple layout of the maze and then moved on to the actual course that we've got at Pitching Hack Hackspace and found it translated really well. It still managed to complete the course with basically the same parameters. But occasionally to get lost on the long straights when it couldn't quite see the end marker. And this was a bit of a persistent issue. It got round, but it did end up sitting doing little jerky moves trying to look for it and losing it. Uh, I managed to tune the corners to be a bit smoother and that saved quite a bit of time and made it a little bit more reliable. Um, but I still had some of these issues. It was around this point I realised that my fixed time moves were causing a bit of an issue. When it finished the fixed time move, the next frame it analysed was actually the image it saw before it started the move. And that would sometimes cause it to go really wrong. But I, uh, I ruled that error out, I fixed that, and then it got around pretty smoothly. Again, this was kind of a five times out of six. It would successfully complete without hitting the walls and it would get around every time. Come to the event and it starts off okay and then gets lost and uh, again I'm blaming the lighting for this it was driving towards the markers okay uh, but like the straight line speed shortly before the event I'd added a backup routine where it would refer to the colours of the walls so if it couldn't see the actual marker it would use the wall colour for guidance and I think that might have been what was causing issues here
So that covers the challenges that I thought would be easier to attempt. Next up is Pi Noon. Given that I'd managed to get colour recognition with the targets going, I thought following a balloon would be relatively easy. Uh, and it was, so here is Paradigm chasing a little balloon. There's, it's got a training routine to learn the colour of the balloon, and it scans around and looks for it. So that worked pretty well. And then next up was training it to avoid driving out the edge of the arena. So I got it to recognise uh, red lower down, and when it saw the edge of the red dropping away, it would turn around and start hunting for the colour. And then that, that worked well too. It's kind of random. And one of the interesting tests we did to see uh, how well this would work just as a random technique was Rob to drive the little radio control thing there and to try and avoid being run over by Paradigm. He's pretty much just driving randomly at this point. And you can see he really struggles to avoid getting run over even though Paradigm's oh. just driving randomly. He still, <laughs> he still keeps getting hit. And then we add all that together and balloon popping. So this is Paradigm in autonomous mode against Dave Booth, and it was quite even. I think it was like 5-5. Five, um, five. Activate. Um, we kept going, and he got me. But Paradigm was doing pretty well. Uh, to say how random it was, um, it was quite an even match, which I was really pleased with. Three, two, one, fight! This is Paradigm in autonomous mode against the reigning champion, Brian Cortiel. <laughs> you can see even though the balloon's fallen off, Paradigm's still going at it. Two, one, fight! So I thought this was going to be one of the more difficult challenges, but you can see it's actually quite competitive. At the actual event, you can see yet again the arena has got strong light and, and shadows across it. For the first round, I managed to mostly calibrate that out, and it went really well. I won 3-0 against my opponent, so fully in autonomous mode. I just went into manual one time when Paradigm fell over. Unfortunately, I don't have any video of this, um, so if anyone's got one, I'd really like to add it in here. The second round, I found the lighting conditions had really changed since the first round, and I tried to recalibrate, but Paradigm kept thinking the transition between light and dark uh, was the edge of the arena and kept randomly just going in reverse. So I had to do a bit more manual driving. And it came down to kind of a head-to-head between Paradigm and his opponent, and, and he, he lost. So that was Paradigm out of the Pyronoon competition. Next up is Golf, which I treat as a combination of the other challenges. So we've got a Ruko markers again for kind of location and defining the route, and then it used object detection to pick up the ball autonomously. And that worked quite well. So here it is, picking up the ball, practicing going down a slope, the articulated ball holder worked really well. And then I stuck Aruka markers on the windmill blades and detected when the blades were out of the way and then drove into the hole. And it automatically kind of went in and backed up again. The golf challenge was only finished at the last minute, so I didn't really expect much at the event. And again, the lighting conditions were bad. But it picked up the ball okay and it drove towards the first marker all right. And then you can see when it gets to the bottom of the slope, it falls over. I thought that'd be okay because I tested it on that kind of great slope. Um, unfortunately, because it was done at the last minute, I didn't really have a recovery routine programmed in, so I had to manually take control and aim it at the marker again. But then I put it back into autonomous mode, and it drove towards that okay, and you can see it scanned towards the next one, it drove towards that. But because the approach speed was different, it didn't stop in the same place, so it hit the uh, corner there. And then that was autonomous mode again, and now it's lost the final marker. So uh, from now on, this is basically manual mode, me trying and failing to drive the boards towards the windmill. The ring holder worked quite well uh, if it was a successful capture but once I lost it it was really difficult to get hold of it again. I definitely think side claws or an actuated holder is the way to go for golf and uh, I really struggle with that final slope. So around this point I think one of the motors locked up with a bit of astroturf stuck in it. Uh, I didn't realise for quite a while that that was a problem. Okay, now shine at the um, thing. First time. Yeah. 
And the second run you can see went wrong even quicker. At this point it's definitely driving a bit weird because of that locked up motor, but I, I hadn't really noticed that. Um, gets round okay, that was that was mostly autonomous, only a bit of manual. You see here it's really not driving straight, it's just juttering around. I don't know if it unlocked itself when I backed up or what there, but basically got to the end, but it's all kind of jammed up. One of the problems with the golf course is it's possible to nearly get it in the hole or get it around the side of the windmill and then you're really stuck. There's just no recovery. And run three went even worse. I like missed the first connection and then it was manual mode from then on because there's no way to autonomously recover. And with that, the ball got super stuck and I never really recovered from it. So that's golf. Um, actually, I guess I did better than average for me in, in that challenge, but still a bit disappointing. Uh, so that just leaves the obstacle course. So I spent a long time thinking about how to tackle the obstacle course from Aruko markers and location to line following, like the ribbon. Since the Aruko marker detection hadn't worked that well over long distances and there were sightline issues with the obstacle course, I thought uh, following a ribbon would be more reliable. And it did work really well in testing. I eventually got it to work on different surfaces and I got a crude stuck detection algorithm working so it could detect which way it was going around the tape and uh, if it had got stuck and bump up full power when it needed it. And you can see that, you know, it got round. So after I got it following the line reasonably reliably, I thought about what obstacles there might actually be on the course, like the turntable and possibly a tunnel. And so I started programming those. It managed to make its way down a tunnel, just following the light at the end, and then using the Aruko marker as a warning, and I got it to get onto the turntable. Come the actual event though, I had the same issue with the lighting. And in fact, this was the, the worst effect for me, really. I think there was, it was because of the white balance, and I decided to go with a blue ribbon to mark the course, it just could not pick it up. Uh, I would calibrate it upstairs and get it detecting the line and I'd bring it downstairs and it just would not detect it on the course. So I ended up doing this challenge entirely manually and I did alright actually, I think I came fourth overall which is pretty good for a small chassis. Um, I struggled a little bit with the slopes and it fell over once on the gravel uh, but it was alright. If anyone's got a video of it I'd love to include that here. Overall, I had a fun but frustrating day. I think I came last in the pro category overall, uh, which is unsurprising given I failed basically every challenge. 
I was really pleased to receive a special award uh, in recognition of the challenge I'd taken on by trying to do all the challenges autonomously. I think I've proven that it's kind of possible based on my build-up videos, but of course at the actual event it didn't really prove very much, other than the lighting conditions can be very challenging, especially if you're using image recognition. I think next time, if I'm let in, I would like to use more sensors to complement the image recognition. So still using that, but maybe uh, accelerometers and encoders and maybe some distance sensors can act as a backup. And if they all agree, then um, make progress. I think that'll be a lot more robust solution. Uh, thanks for watching all this and uh, maybe see you at next Pi Wars.